When did you realize staying silent was more powerful than shouting back? I used to think keeping my head down was the safest way through high school. Blend in, stay quiet, avoid drama. That all changed junior year because of Rachel Green. Rachel was the kind of girl everyone listened to. Cheer captain, straight A student, PTA mom's favorite, and me? I was the weird kid in the back of the class. Hood up, earbuds in, constantly sketching circuits in a notebook instead of paying attention to what color Gatsby's light was. Everything started with one forgotten backpack. It was Thursday, chemistry lab. I'd finished early and left my bag at my station while I ran to the bathroom. When I came back, Mr. Jennings was holding my backpack like it was radioactive. Sit down, Josh, he said coldly. We need to talk. Inside my bag was a bottle of vodka, except I don't drink at all. Never have. It smelled like a setup from the moment I saw it, but no one believed me. Not the principal, not the counselor, not even my own lab partner who said, I mean, you are kind of quiet. Nobody really knows what you're into. Rachel was the one who discovered it. Said she smelled alcohol near my station. Said she saw me sneak something in. I got suspended. Two weeks. My college counselor said it could ruin my chances at scholarships. And Rachel, she walked away with a gold star for keeping our school safe. But here's the thing, I might be quiet, but I'm not stupid. While on suspension, I started piecing things together. Rachel had been under review for her own disciplinary issue a week earlier caught plagiarizing an English essay. If a second strike landed, she'd lose her shot at valedictorian and the Stanford recommendation from the principal. So what does someone like Rachel do when she's cornered? She finds a scapegoat, someone invisible, someone like me. What she didn't count on was that I build tech for fun. See, before I got suspended, I'd been helping Mr. Jennings test a classroom sensor project, a bunch of mini IoT devices tracking temp, humidity, and motion for a grant. I'd coded the whole back end and helped install the micro cameras too. The principal didn't even know we were running a live pilot. And guess what? One was aimed right at the station where Rachel discovered my bottle. The day I returned, I went straight to Mr. Jennings with my thumb drive. Frame by frame, we watched her pull the bottle from her oversized purse, slip it into my bag, glance around, and then dramatically notice it minutes later. Mr. Jennings's face was stone cold. You need to take this to the principal right now. We walked into the office together, mid-period. Rachel was in there already, chatting with a college rep. When the footage played, her face went ghost white. I, I don't know how that she started, but the rep had already stood up. I think we're done here, he said, and walked out. Rachel was expelled. Her mother tried everything. Lawyers, social media smear campaigns about digital manipulation, even tried blaming me for hacking the school system. But the time-stamped footage and Mr. Jennings's testimony shut it all down. Two weeks later, I got a formal apology. Full scholarship reinstated. The local paper even ran a story titled, From Accused to Avenged, How One Student Used Heck to Expose a Lie. I didn't smile during the interview. I didn't need to, because I knew the best revenge wasn't yelling or fighting back. It was letting the truth speak for itself. That's when everything shifted. Teachers started asking if I'd be interested in tutoring other students in robotics. The AV club asked me to give a guest workshop on IoT system. People started sitting next to me at lunch, not out of pity, but because they respected what I'd done. Even my lab partner came up to me and said, hey man, I'm sorry, I should have backed you up. I didn't say much, just nodded. And Rachel? Last I heard, her mom moved her to a private school out of state. Her dreams of Stanford? Gone. Her reputation? Burned to the ground. All because she thought I was too quiet to fight back.